Some actors are just unforgettable, and Amber Midthunder's top of the list. We wouldn't be overstating it by saying that her character? She's actually a force of nature. You can't just go up against the most famous hunter and come out with your spine still attached. Naru's one of the best hunters in the prequel. That's why we're going to talk about everything Amber shared in an exclusive Empire podcast interview. First off, Amber Midthunder almost became an MMA fighter and an MUA. When she was asked if she had any other career in mind, Midthunder responded hilariously. The actress said that as a kid, she couldn't really figure out that her parents were actors. They also worked at a gym that had jiu-jitsu and MMA, so she started to participate in it too. Then Amber became super invested in it, to the point where she was teaching MMA and jiu-jitsu to both adults and kids. If she'd stuck to that, she would have probably gone on to become an MMA fighter. We're sure glad she didn't because if she had, we'd never get to see her act this good, and that was pretty good for her role in Prey. She's playing a hunter in it, so it makes sense. She also added that she loved playing pretend, so she knew she might end up as an actor because she'd always memorized her dad's scripts. But the actress stopped us there. That didn't mean she would definitely become an actor, though. She also did a makeup internship while she was doing a bunch of different things and looking at small parts of the industry. The acting bit only got real when she made the decision to move to LA to become big. Coming up, how'd she handle all the secrecy around the movie? In case you didn't know already, this was a super secretive movie. Sure, we got some hints here and there, but we had no idea about what we'd get to see in it. And it looks like Amber didn't either at first. What she did know was that she was gonna play a Native American character who was gonna be a hunter in the movie. She didn't even know the time period. It's not like she needed to know much. There were only two scenes with her character. The first one was between Naru and her mom, Aruka, and the second one was Tabe by the fire. Even with those scenes, she told us that she had no idea how they'd turn out, and they're very different from how they filmed them. Plus, the movie dipped during the pandemic, so when it came back, she didn't really know what to expect. She didn't even realize that this was a Predator movie until somebody told her at the audition, and her first answer was just pure confusion. She had to really go through the script to figure out what was going on in the scene she was going to do. Up next, what she knew about the movie and the iconic dialogue. The series is pretty old. It's been around for longer than Amber's life. So when the interviewer asked if she'd ever heard of the movie growing up, the actress stayed honest. She only knew about it vaguely in the background. It is funny now that you think about how successful she is because of the series. The Prey actress laughed as she added that this used to be something she was proud of, but now it felt a little embarrassing to say out loud. She only knew about the series from memes and jokes online until she had to play the part herself. That's when she had no choice but to get familiar with it. Also, apparently, there were a lot of puns about the dialogue in the movie. You wouldn't think the team would have that much fun with a movie like this, but they do. She shared how this one time, the director called her and made a bunch of puns when she thought he was going to say something serious. Ah, puns. Love them or hate them. We can never escape them. Following up, group viewing and a hotel set. Did the team ever just sit together and go through the old movies in the series? Sadly, they didn't. Amber shared that they didn't get to do that, although she definitely wishes they could have. They stayed at the same hotel, and they did have have one movie night, but they saw Alien vs. Predator instead of the movie that came before Prey. There wasn't really a structure to how they made Prey. Then the actress talked about what it was like to film on set. They used to do the shooting scenes in the wild and then sleep at a hotel nearby. Sometimes she even slept in her car because it was just easier to get to the set that way. And they filmed everywhere in the wilderness around Calgary, so we get why she did that. Her personal favorite was filming on Stony Nakoda Reserve Land, since she's related to the tribe, and she herself grew up around southwestern tribes. It was nice to be in an area with a similar culture. Finally, showing the Native American experience. This was the biggest question we wanted the answer to, since a big part of Mid Thunder's character's arc is being Native American. The actress told us that even though she had personal experience, since she herself shared the identity, she'd never done a period piece in her career. Plus, it was kind of huge to be working with a large indigenous cast. When they started shooting Comanche Camp, it was a pretty big deal for her to get to see other Native American people. Plus, the setting moved her emotionally. She added that she actually got to see a lot of Native American people because there was also an internship program going on, so there were many of them on set at that time. That's what made it all really special for her, and the whole experience of spending time up north was a pretty transformative time for Amber. Because she identified with how the character was feeling while playing her, she added that they shot the movie in a super interesting way, and it was cool for her every single time. Now for some other related news that you might have missed out on, starting off with what went down in the post credit scene of Prey. During the first part of the credits, we see a really cool animated recap of what happened in the movie with one twist. The last image pans to show a predator ship coming out of storm clouds over Nauru's camp, which suggests that the aliens attacked again, which doesn't seem like a good move on the part of the predators. You guys lost. Go home. We don't know how these things turned out or when they happened. Maybe we'll find out in a sequel. It's possible that they left Nauru alone and that the image is a metaphor for later hunts involving humans. But then again, the original Predator and its sequel show that the aliens are kinda obsessed with fighting us. That might be wishful thinking, though, because the flintlock 
pistol Nehru got from the dead poacher? It's on her belt when she returns to camp, but it shows up later. If we look at 1997's Predator 2, though, even after the humans win, a bunch of predators look like they're ready to kill him. So by this logic, it shows that the predators got this gun back at some point in the past few years. They could have killed Nehru, teamed up with her, or just taken it after she died. We'll only find out in the next film. Following up with Prey's numbers, we'll definitely get a sequel. After Prey came out on Hulu, the streaming service confirmed that it had the biggest premiere of any TV show or movie on their service. As is the case with almost every other streaming service, Hulu didn't tell us exactly how many people watched the movie, but we now have a good idea of how popular the movie turned out to be. Nielsen released their viewership numbers for the first week of August, which gives us a pretty good idea of how many people watched Prey, and to be honest, it was a lot. They said that more than 585 million minutes of Prey were watched in its first three days. That means almost 5.8 million Hulu subscribers watched it, and it's a pretty long movie, so that's some major news. Lastly, was the 2010 Predators as good as Prey? Okay, we gotta be honest. Since the first movie, the Predator series felt like it was just trying to keep us to stay relevant. The main character became bland because there were no new angles or ways to look at him. Predators were made to make up for that wrong. How well did it work, though? The movie definitely reminded us of how cruel this hunter was. We saw a strong, sure-of-itself beast that lives up to the series' name and has some great kills. Predators look great and add to the world's history where they can, but the story and characters are terrible, and Adrian Brody's a bad fit for the role. This makes it hard to like the movie entirely. By the time Little Richard was mentioned in the closing credits in a way that didn't make sense, and the script hinted at a bigger, weirder story, we might have felt like this was a chance lost to do something a little more. After this year's great prey, Predators moved up to a respectable third place in the franchise, so it's not entirely lost. That's a wrap for this video. What else would you want to know about Amber Mint Thunder? Is she as cool as the character she plays in the movie? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!